So in this lesson, you're going to learn where are the buyers and the sellers trapped. And to understand this, you need to locate your transaction points. So what are transaction points? Transactions points is a place where business was initiated. So in this case, you could see that price was making higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, higher highs. And what happened here? At this point, the market switched. The market started going bearish. But what happened prior to this? There was also a structure break. So what can you say at this point? You can say that buyers were buying the market here, buying the market here, and buying the market at the breakout. So when price did switch direction, all the buyers got trapped right here. This is a point where the buyers were trapped. So this would be our transaction point. This is where the buyers were trapped for the sell cycle to start. So now price made lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, lower highs. And at a certain point, what do you see here? At a certain point, price stopped selling. Price stopped selling right here. And we know as price was selling, sellers kept coming in, sellers kept coming in, and you have the lowest quality of sellers. They would have still been trying to get in the market at this point as price was rejecting and including this pullback. So you have traders that entered the trade right here, right here, and even at this pullback. So this entire area now is a transaction point. So what does this tell us? That these areas right here is where business is conducted. You have sellers trapped right here. So what we're going to focus on is our major reversal points. Somewhere where the direction of the market switched. So let's say you have a swing right here. And then you have micro swings right here. Then you have a major swing. Then you have micro swings. So what happened here is that price was being purchased here, purchased here, purchased here, purchased here, all the way up to this point where price was even being purchased at this point prior to the reversal. So we can understand that buyers were trapped here and the direction of the market changed. So understand that there are buyers trapped here. And a lot of traders, when they do get trapped, they pull their stop loss further and further. So you got to understand that this area here, we cannot just release them. By release them, I mean, we cannot just come up here and we cannot just come up to this point and continue the bull trend and let these traders win. This is not going to happen more than likely. What more than likely is going to happen is price is going to come up to this area. These buyers that purchase price here, they're going to think that they're getting released and they're going to move their stop loss back from, let's say if their stop loss was all the way down here, if their stop loss was all the way at the bottom, now they would move their stop loss somewhere right here just because they're finally in profit and they think the market is going to continue. But in reality, price will come back, take them out again, and then continue with the trend. So understand, these points are very important because traders do get trapped in these areas. So let's take a look at one more example before we start looking at in chart examples. So let's say price is bullish. So let's say the trader took a trade right here with their stop loss, let's say beneath this micro swing. So this is the trade and they think price is going to continue higher. So let's say this happens. Let's say price goes bullish for a little bit and then turns back on them. What a lot of traders do is they pull their stop loss further and further. 
Why? Because they're avoiding getting hit. They think that they got the direction right. Let's say they think they have their macro analysis right or whatever, and they anticipate price to continue higher. So they're moving their stop loss to avoid this loss. And a lot of rookies, not even rookies, a lot of traders still commit this mistake. So what happens now is you have a major pullback from this level and a micro sell cycle started. So what can we say here? We have our major swing right here. This is our major high and this is our major low. The, this is our major swings. This is the institutional trend. Everything inside is for the retail traders. And what happens here is as they move their stop loss, let's say now price started making higher highs and price is slowly approaching their area. So as price is approaching their area, they're moving their stop loss back closer and closer, thinking, OK, price will turn around and they will finally be in profit to take their stop loss. Even though if you look at the bigger scale, they actually risk almost 10 times the trade. And why is this an important point? Because look at the selling pressure that came from this area. And this is why this was the transaction point. This was the transaction point, not just because of a market shift, but because of a major market shift. Look at the selling pressure that happened here compared to all the previous selling pressure, which was these micro swings. So compare the selling pressure when you have a major selling pressure compared to all its previous selling pressures. This is a transactional point. So let's keep going. What else could happen here? Price is now putting them in profit. And once they're in profit, their stop loss goes to break even. So now they think they're going to get this big trade. So now they're expanding their TP. So now they think, okay, price is going to continue higher. I endured this entire uh, uh, drive to the bottom side and I had to widen my stop loss. So I might as well widen my TP. So now what happens next? Price will come back down, take them out, take them out completely off the trade. So now the trader is completely gone and price will go the direction the trader intended. And that is the function. So what, we, what you're going to learn in this lesson is how to avoid this, how to avoid this, and not only how to avoid this, how to take advantage of this. So you have your buyers being trapped here. Why is it your buyers being trapped here? Because look at this entire sell cycle. This entire sell cycle happened from this point. So we know that buyers have been trapped here. As I explained previously, buyers were buying the market and they were trapped here, thinking price is going to continue higher prior to the sell cycle. Now, what you might find confusing here is why is it this sell? Why is it the sellers being trapped right here? Now pay attention. Look at this bullish momentum compared to all the previous bullish momentum since this since the buyers got trapped look at all these bull candles you have two bull candles here you have one bull candle here and one bull candle here you haven't had this big of a move since the beginning of the buyers being trapped so this is why the sellers were trapped right here so what are we waiting for we are waiting for our stop hunt we're waiting for our perch our liquidity run so what are we going to do we're going to wait so price approaches this area and we're waiting for a hunt and back inside of the range. Again, you don't know how far price is going to go back inside the range. You can always hit its extreme and then continue lower or price could break structure and continue higher or price could even do this. Price could even come down here, come back just for a little bit, find resistance and drop down. But what we do know is price will not just give them the entire move. Why would price not give them the entire move? Because then trading would be quite simple, right? If let's say price just comes down here and releases releases all these sellers, 
that we're trapped right here and give some this move, then it's just too easy. The market needs to make it a little bit more complicated. So now we are on the eight hour time frame. So what I always suggest is go one eight. This is something I always recommend when going on the lower time frames. So I went on the one hour. So what am I waiting for? I'm waiting for a range to be formed. So I'm waiting for price to take this level out, go for the stop hunt and come back. When it comes back, what happens? Price touches the area and comes back and then comes back down. Now you have a range. You have a trading range again. I'll explain it with. Explain it with the path tool. So let's say price stop hunts gives the sellers that were trapped from previously a signal and then comes back to that level. So now what happens? Now you have your range, you have your swing high and you have your swing low. So this is the range. So how would you trade this? You would trade this once price breaks out of this range. So you will take a trade right here and your stop loss being right here and you can have a fixed uh, reward, which would be a one to one. You can have a two to one, or you can always look and pull out your fib and target the extreme level. So you can have your one to one, which is fixed. In this case, it would be exactly the 50%. Your second TP can be at 50%, or in this case, can be your two to one, or you could may just simply make it a rejection at your extreme. But in this case, Let's focus on the 50%. So you have your swing high. You have your swing high right here. And you have your swing low. Let's just make it straight. So your entry would be once price breaks this level and your stop loss would be right here. And you can have your one to one right here and we can go back to the 50% right here. Okay, so now you are in the trade. Why? Because price broke this level. So now you are in the trade. And once you get your one to one, you can shrink the stop loss a little bit or go to break even. So now that you had your successful trade, let's look what's next. So you have your buyers being trapped right here. Why was it your buyers being trapped right here? Because price was going bullish and then quickly ripped down. The sub move was bigger compared to its previous move since the seller's been trapped. You had a major pull away. So this is one level. And what is our next level? Like I said previously, we're disregarding these micro swings. We're not really paying attention to these swings. We're paying attention where, like we said previously, the buyer's been trapped. Where have the buyers been trapped? Right here. So these are our next two levels where we are looking to take advantage of the system. Okay, so now let's go on the one hour. Now what we can do is go on the eight hour and see. And you could have another level here because you had a major pullback, which is a rejection from this premium level right here. And again, we are disregarding these micro swings. Something like this. 
we're not paying attention to these little swings. We're paying attention to the bigger moves because even if you compare this move right here compared to this move right here, you would prefer this major sell away. Now let's go into one hour. Let's see if we can get a stop on and a range. Okay, so you had, what did you have here? You had price rejecting this level and making your pullback. So you had your range. So now this is our range. So you're waiting for this level to break. And it broke. So once price broke this level, your stop loss is right here. And you can have your one to one trade, which you already smashed. And you can have your two to one right here. And you had your two to one before price wanting the reverse. So let's see if we can get a three to one. And again, you're managing risk as you go. Obviously, the highest probability is your one to one, then your two to one, then your three to one. Okay, so price did give you a three to one. So what do you have here? Always look at what happened prior to the market. So you had your buyers being trapped here and you had your sellers being trapped here and price trapped all the buyers and came back inside of the range. So what do we know now? What we do know is that our buyers are trapped right here and our sellers are trapped right here these are major swings so you had a break let's go to the one hour so what are we waiting for we're waiting for a range to be formed since it didn't happen right here we're waiting for a range to be formed somewhere that we can read price and we want to break that range we want to take advantage of the momentum breaking that range because if the range is broken, we can understand that price will not give anybody that was trapped right here. It wouldn't just give them an entire move of 200 points. Price needs to pull back inside of the range. That's what we're taking advantage of here. We can understand that the market will not give out any easy money. So let's see. Okay. So you had your range, you had your swing low, you had your swing high. So you have a range right here. So what you're waiting for is a short right once price breaks this range. So right below. And your stop loss would be once, let's wait and see, where would our stop loss be? Okay, our stop loss is right here. And what do we have here? Let's get our one to one. So our one to one would be right here. And where would our two to one be? Two to one would be right here. Which is to be honest. No, it's it's likely. Three to one is more than is unlikely, but we can more than likely get a two to one here. Let's see. You see, we took advantage of the momentum breaking this level. What a range is, a range is simply your shelf being broken, volume is being trapped in this level, and once price breaks below this level, you can understand that selling pressure was released. It's just as simple as that. So let's see if we get our complete two to one. Okay, we got our two to one, and price will more than like reverse from here. So let's go on a higher time frame and see what happened.
Oh, it did give us our um, four to one. Okay. So now, where are the buyers trapped? Our buyers would be trapped right here. Why would they be trapped right here? Because price was buying and something formed this reversal. So there are traders that took a loss right here or they're moving their stop loss. Just how I explained previously. We understand that the buyers are trapped here. So let's keep going. Okay, you had this major move right here. Compared to all the previous bull moves. If you look at this bull move right here. Price went from here to here compared to all the other previous bull moves. Okay, so we have our, um, we might have to go back. Is because we missed that trade. Let's take a look. So we have our sellers being trapped right here. People that thought price was going to continue lower. So you go into one hour and let's see if we have our range. Okay, we more than likely do not have our range, so we wouldn't be participating in this trade. Or we actually might. Okay, price did retrace back. So now we can take advantage of. This swing high is our range and this swing low. So now this is our range. So once price breaks this range. Once price breaks this range, we are taking our one to one. And the good thing about this trade compared to all the previous ones, all the previous ones were counter trend. This one is pro trend. So it has a high probability of breaking and taking out all the buyers that have been trapped. So let's see how we can set up our stop loss. Okay, perfect. So our stop loss would be right here. Our one to one is somewhere right here. And our two to one. And we'll more than likely complete our two to one since we are in line with the trend. What I mean, we're in line with the trend. As you can see, price is making high, low, high, low, fail to break here. And we're going to continue making highs. And you can see the momentum once price breaks the shelf. This is why I recommend trading this way. Because when you trade continuations, it's a lot easier than waiting for price to come back here and reject from somewhere. Trading reversals is extremely dangerous. But trading continuations takes off a lot of the risk out the way. Okay, so now let's go on a higher time frame. So what do you have here? You have your buyers were trapped right here. And now let's remove this. And now you have your sellers being trapped right here. Let me just mark this for context. Okay, so now let's see if we can get a range to take price back. Okay, so we have a range. We have a swing high and a swing low. So we have a swing high right here and a swing low right here. So if price does break this level right here, right below it, you would take a sell which are one to one, two to one, then three to one. And again, you're going counter trend like I explained previously. So this is why we don't target all the way the extreme level. Now it could happen, but a lot of times it don't happen. And this is where the probabilities come in. You would rather trade something that is more than likely to go in your favor than be optimistic and try and be greedy and take the entire trade. We're not in the trade yet. Let's see. Okay, now we are in the trade. So now this is your stop loss, your TP. A lot of times your TP would be just coming back inside of the range, but in this case, it would be a negative. So we would try and aim for a one-to-one. -one. 
So this will be our first TP. Your second TP would be right here. And your third, which in this case, since it's a counter trend, it'll more than likely not happen, but we would still aim for our 3R. Our one to one, our two to one. Now we're waiting on our three to one. And to be honest, you could have exited at your second take profit. Because even if it does hit your third, this is taking too long now. And I'm not a fan of taking trades where price drops and then consolidates and then drops. Just for the fact that it could always just rip to the bull side. And conform a macro ETM setup to the bull side. And that's what we don't want. And that's what more than likely will happen in this case. Let's go into higher time frames. Yep, it was a ETM setup on the higher time frame to the bull side. Okay, so now let's mark we have our sellers being trapped right here. See if we can get a good move to the downside. Okay, uh, you can consider this a decent move compared to its previous bearish moves, just for the fact that you had this small move right here, this small move right here, and this move supersedes them. So let's see. It's still a low quality compared to all the other ones. Okay, so what do you have here? You have a swing high right here. And you can consider this a swing low, this wick point right here, but I would rather get another pullback to even consider this trade. I'd rather get a good pullback. Okay, that's perfect. So now, once price breaks below this level, I can take the continuation trade. So let's see if price even reaches this level. Okay, so this would be our stop loss right here. And we are aiming for our one-to-one. -one. Me personally, I'm not a fan of how huge the stop loss is. But let's see, where would our one-to-one -one be? This would be our one-to-one. -one. And where would our two-to-one be? Two-to-one would be all the way at the extreme, which more than likely won't happen. So let's just target the one-to-one. -one. Okay, perfect. Our one to one hit. Let's see if we can get our two to one. Okay, our two to one's been hit. And so the question that you still have, why did I pick the eight hour time frame? Just when you look at time frames, in my opinion, it's more about what you can read. It's about what you can see, not having a stationary time frame. So me using the eight hour in this specific asset class, which is your USD, I can see my swings clearly and it takes out the noise. So what I'm not trying to see is a swing and a lot of noise, then a swing and a lot of noise. I wanna see clear price action. And with the eight hour time frame in this specific asset class, I can see my swings clearly. And that's where the one eight rule goes. So whichever time frame you can see uh, price action clearly. So again, like you can go on a 12 hour time frame. And it's still clear, but it lacks a little bit of details. That's why I preferred the eight hour. And when you go that far in the time frame, your entry, your stop loss would be too big. And at the same time, you might miss a lot of trades if you go too big, because then you would have to use anywhere between the three hour to the four hour for your entry. And this is something you want to avoid. So try and go as low as you can without having it look something like this, where there's just too much noise. So... Like the one hour here would look ridiculous, right? If this is your macro analysis. So try and go as low as you can without adding too much noise. Hope you guys enjoyed this lesson. Make sure you like, share, and subscribe. And make sure you visit our website and use code ETMARMY for 20% off.